In addition to classifying the activated sludge process as either high rate, conventional, or low rate, the way in which the biological reactor is configured will distinguish one activated sludge plant from another. We'll be taking a quick look at about 20 different activated sludge configurations, each designed to accomplish a specific purpose. And you'll notice that by adjusting the dissolved oxygen level, the hydraulic retention time, the MCRT, and directing the sludge recycle flows, that the activated sludge process can remove BOD, ammonia, nitrogen, and phosphorus. The first configuration we'll look at is the plug flow activated sludge process. Flow enters one end and leaves at the opposite end, moving uniformly through the basin. The BOD concentration and the DO uptake rate will get smaller and smaller as the water moves through the basin. The total suspended solids and the volatile suspended solids will increase farther down the length of the basin as the bacteria grow and reproduce. This type of system is normally at least 10 times longer than it is wide. The organic load and the dissolved oxygen uptake is very high at the reactor inlet, and the aeration system must be able to transfer sufficient oxygen at this point, and then can be tapered off as the water moves through the reactor. This design provides the highest BOD removal rate per unit volume, as well as being less susceptible to sludge bulking caused by filamentous bacteria than other designs, assuming there is sufficient dissolved oxygen at the front end of the reactor. 